You know, I just walking around and I, honestly, I'm so thankful for a church that believes in the miracle working power of God. Come on, somebody say amen to that. That's good news. He's the healer. He's a miracle worker. We want to pray for you anytime you're going through, every time you're going through a difficulty. Speaking of difficulty, I'm going to talk to you today about mornings with God. We'll start today and we'll go for five more weeks on the subject of prayer, spending time with God in the morning. Talking about struggle, I don't remember the month, but early this year, I, I, I have to admit, I, I I think I even confessed it publicly you know, on a Sunday. I, I was going through a season where I was struggling in my personal prayer life. Anybody ever relate to that? Yeah, okay. Well, that was me. So I, I'm praying. I wasn't that I wasn't spending the time, but it just wasn't connecting. And, th- and this went on for quite a while, you know, and, and, and I, I mean like in a few months. And I'm, I'm preaching to the church on prayer. And I'm still struggling in my own prayer life. Now, I was doing it. This is important. I was continuing to pray, but something was missing. So part of my prayer life became, God, what's going on? I don't understand. I, there's something off in me. Is, is Tammy in sin? I mean, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Is there a problem? Is there something we're doing? Uh, nothing answered. And, and maybe a, a month or two later, this is maybe like in spring of the year, I started waking up in the middle of the night, like 3 o'clock. I'm wrestling. I'm going to go back to sleep, and I couldn't. I just lay there awake for two hours. Um, I'm cursing the devil. Get out of here. Leave me alone. You're waking me up, messing with me. <laughs> and, and it became one day a week, then two, then almost every day. And I'm trying to unpack what in the world is going on with this interruption in my night. <clears throat> so I decided, uh, duh, maybe this is God. And so I, I, I'd wake up in my, from my sleep and I would leave the bedroom and I would go out to the living room to the couch. And I, I'm sitting there and I want to get pretty comfortable. It might be three or four o'clock in the morning. If I'm going to pray, I might as well be comfortable. So I would, you know, kind of just sit up, you know, and, and uh, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. And I, I'm a little uncomfortable in that position, you know, just a little bit more. <sighs> oh, I was out. I was gone. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm waking up, I'm trying, I'm falling asleep, and, and I'm trying to figure out what's going on, and it's affecting a lot of things in my life. You know, if you, if you get into a rhythm as a Christian and you're praying and something messes with it, it messes with your whole life because your whole life is your relationship with God. It's not what you do on Sunday. It's 24-7. And I, I just knew that I needed to make some adjustments and get some of my, my own personal walk with God unpack and find out what was going on. So I started reading, studying, praying, listening to messages, talking to people, because this was very serious to me. I, I, I had plateaued. Something was off. I'm not hearing anything. And so I, 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 I went back and, and, and I, I, I kind of researched, talked, prayed, looked, and I came up with these four points. They're real common. You'll, you maybe will recognize them. Four, four steps, four things we can do to develop the habit of mornings with God. Something that would be so effective, so life-changing, so radical that I can't wait for the morning to come. Something that opens the heavens. My relationship with God is sweet and personal and real. You see, see, if if prayer, I heard someone say this this week, if prayer is not real to you, it means God's not real to you. Oh my gosh, when I heard that, that that was me. Of course I believed in it, but the real the vibrancy was off. So I, I started looking, okay, here's four steps, and I want to share these with you today. And we're going to go on a journey together right now and for the next five weeks. And I believe and declare over this church that your life is about to change. You will never be the same again. I, I honestly, I, I think it, it's not, it, this is not business as usual. It's going to change. Touch your neighbor and say, your life's going to change. 
So I want to give you these steps, okay? And I'll have some scriptures and some stories. The first step is decide on a time. Everybody say time. time. See, a lot of people say, well, you know, I just kind of pray most days kind of when I can. It changes. And I think that's a, a, a good thing. I, in fact, the Bible tells us to pray about anything and to pray without ceasing. We ought to be people who anytime something comes up, we whisper a prayer. And that's the way we should live. But there's something significant in the scripture. There's something significant in life when we start our morning with God. The morning. In fact, studies have shown that there's a, 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 that a positive morning routine, this is a generally, a positive morning routine can lead to increased energy levels, reduced stress, and improved focus, essentially, you're setting the tone for a more positive day ahead. Throughout the years, uh, CEOs, business professionals, famous athletes, wealthy billionaires, a growing number of people for decades have been declaring to us that if you set aside time and develop the habit of early morning uh, kind of a peace moment or, or just kind of being quiet in this, it will radically change your life. And big names, I mean, many people that you and I know and respect that kind of run the world, really. They get up at 4, 4.30 every single day. That's their starting point. There's something about getting up and spending the morning with God. Now, for some of you, what do I mean? Well, we're going to talk about it and get real practical. And that, so the first thing, first thing is set a time. So what time would you set? What, what, what time is it in the morning that things begin to explode? You know, when, ah, get the, light, the backpack, flip the egg, that kind of thing. So if that happens at 7 and you're getting up at 6.50, <laughs> you, 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 you see the cramp in this style. And so you're just barely getting up in enough time to get your eyes open and some clothes on to go out and jump into the, ah, and, you know, we all do that. It, it's not like you're, anybody's wrong here, but that's the world we live in, the backpack, the homework. I forgot this. I got this lesson today. You got to pick me. I got to pick you up. You got to go here. And, and we just, ah, and, and okay. If you want to really set the day in motion and in order, if that, if that description happens at seven, then I'm going to get the clock and go back at least a half an hour. Get up, kind of get adjusted, get thinking, do whatever you need to do, and spend some time with God. I'm suggesting as far as an amount of time, every day, seven days a week. This is just general. I don't have a word from God. This is just my pastor's advice. I'm suggesting you, you, you look at spending 20 minutes in your morning with God. More if you can, but as a starting point, 20 minutes. Tammy and I, uh, we were a new married couple in a great church up in the Pacific Northwest in Portland, Oregon. And uh, the church had a series of teachings on praying on a daily basis, similar to what we're doing here, mornings with God. It wasn't called that. And it so changed our lives. The suggestion was to pray an hour a day back then. They had scriptures on this, the whole package, and go through this prayer pattern you're supposed to follow. And so we did it immediately. And to be honest with you, we've prayed that prayer focus every day for over 40 years. It has been the driving force of who we are and who we've become. Because those prayer times, those mornings with God, bring in moments with God. Did you hear what I just said? You see, sometimes we misread prayer. And what I mean by that is we, we, we hear a pastor or someone teaching, we should pray, and when you pray, you'll get answers. And we get all excited, and then we try to do it in the morning, and it just seems like nothing's happening. We don't see anything. We don't hear anything. Ain't nothing happening. We, we, we can misjudge prayer by what we're observing just with our eyes and ears. And we, here's the thing, whenever you and I pray, when we go to that morning time with God, that 20-minute that focus, you're setting something in motion, guaranteed. You pray. Well, I don't feel it. It's not about feeling. It's about prayer. It's about communicating with heaven. It's on earth as in heaven. I sometimes feel it, and I love the feeling, a sense of closeness to God, but sometimes I don't feel that. Does that mean the prayer didn't work? 
I don't think so. Ask Daniel in the Old Testament. He was a great man of prayer, prayed every day. He had a routine. And he was struggling with a big question in his life, so he started praying every day for the same thing, and he never got the answer. 15 days, 20. On the 21st day, he finally gets an answer. An angel comes to his house. And the, and the angel, let me just read what the angel said. It's pretty cool. Can you guys put that up on the screen? Daniel chapter 10. Since the first day you began to pray. Since the first day. But he came on the 21st day. What would have happened if he'd stopped? He says, since the first day you begin to pray, your request has been heard in heaven, and I have come in answer to your prayer. So setting a time and being consistent with it. I, I, I get, you can pray, pray anytime, pray all the time, but I, I feel from God, I feel a mandate from heaven. I'm going to stand up and say it. I feel God calling our church to commit ourselves to mornings with God. Amen. Just that clear. And, and for some of us here, for some of you here, that's going to be reconnecting to something you have done, maybe you've kind of gotten away from it, or you're kind of doing it for a few minutes now, but you're really actually a pretty deep prayer person. Some of you are like what the Bible calls an intercessor, but life has happened. This is a wake-up call. This is a wake-up call from heaven. In fact, that's what happened to me. I started rebuking the devil when I woke up in the middle of the night because I thought it was just some interruption, but I realized this verse for you in Isaiah 50. This is all on decide a time. Are you with me? And it says this, the sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, he wakens me and opens my understanding to his will. Yes. Oh my gosh, I, I, I remembered that verse and looked it up back months ago when I was waking up and realized it must have been a God idea, so I started getting up in the morning and uh, I need my prop. I started getting up in the morning and I would start off with my feet up and then I would feet over and too many times I'd fall back to snoozing and kind of lost the reason. And I was asking God, I mean, this is a journey. I, I want to help the church, and I, I want to help myself. This is about me as a Christian, okay? And I, God, to help me to figure this out, I, I want more fervency. I, I, want to, I want to be ready to pray. And, and I got this idea, you know, why don't I just have coffee as soon as I wake up? Now, that messes with me. Because, yeah, I'm a big coffee guy, and I like to eat, drink coffee when I'm eating with the exact meal that I know is perfect. And you take me off of that, and I, and I get irritable. I, I No, 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 I don't drink coffee then. It's got to be hot. It's got to be right when the food... I, so, but I'm, I'm hearing this thought, what, why don't you have coffee while you're praying? So I got up the next day, and I went into the room, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, when you get up, and by the way, these... For the last six months, I've been awake anywhere from 3 to 4 o'clock. This morning at 3.20. And, and it, I just, I'm, t I'm still a little sleepy. And I'm still, you know, kind of maybe telling myself I should go back to bed. But I've learned to push through that. Should I repeat that? I've learned to push through that thought and that emotion. And I just by faith go to the counter and make the coffee. Because coffee... And this is down on point number three. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Uh, forget the points. I'm just going to talk to you, okay? Yeah. First thing is establish a time. And, uh, and then secondly is uh, find a good place. The third one is discover a prayer prop up. Meaning for me, I was trying. I really was. But it, it, was, it just wasn't connecting. And I'm not kidding you. The first day, and this happened like a month ago. This is really fresh. I mean, I made the coffee, and I sat it down, and I took the first sip. It's just amazing. I just, uh, you know, it's just, I wish, I, I really wish you could have some, but, I, you know. And, and I took a couple more sips. Super hot, got to be super hot and super strong, or I don't want them. This is perfect. And, and I drink three or four sips, and it, I don't know about you, it works pretty quick in me. Suddenly, I feel spiritual. <laughs> I, 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 and that, that was a joke, but I'm serious. Because what, li, 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 listen, listen, your spirit is assisted by your soul and your body. 
your prayer life is spiritual. It's not soul. Your prayer life is your spirit. You, you got a spirit. You're born again. Your born again spirit wants to talk to God and know him. But your soul and your body can either be contributors or they can mess with you. So for me, in the early morning, it wasn't working as well. I was doing it because I knew I was on a discovery of reawakening my prayer life. I knew getting up when the Holy Spirit's waking me up, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Change my whole life. I can't go to bed late. I got to go to bed at nine o'clock. I mean, it's like my dad did. I thought he was a real caveman. So now I'm doing it. So, 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 so I, if, if I'm go, you know, I wake up and I, and I know at the right time, I'm sleepy. I'm, I'm trying to poor Jerry. You need to go back to bed. I don't do that anymore. I don't even listen to it one time. Never, never. Never, never do I do that. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go in there and make the cough, prop my eyes open. And once I get a few sips, like right now, man, I just feel good. And I just, I'm ready to talk to God. And, and, but I had a problem. I mean, I'm so eccentric. So, so, so I had the coffee and I'm on the couch and I, Tammy would kill me. I can't put the coffee on the couch. What if I bumped it? I mean, I have to hold it the whole time, and the table's way over there. And I thought, I need this little tray. I need a, I need a prop up. I need a tray that holds my coffee, and it can sit right by me. Now, now listen, listen. You need to do the same thing. If you don't think of prop ups, you might not pray. This literally. And I'm going to be, this literally, this little thing has changed my prayer life. I cannot wait. First time I remember to this degree in 50 years of being a person of prayer, to be honest with you. First time I can remember that I cannot wait to go to bed so I can get up. (laughs) Because I know I'm going to have the coffee because that's my prop up. It just kind of gets me excited and then it gets me into prayer. So so I told Tammy, I said, we got to go shopping. And that's a big deal for me to say that. She said, what? she said, what do you want? I said, I got to find a tray, a prayer tray. So what's that? I said, I don't know yet. I got to go find it. So we're walking down the aisles and found one. That's ugly. That's too big. That's too fat. She said, what are you doing? I said, don't trust me. And so she found this one. I said, that's it. That's the one. But it's too slippery. Oh, so I had to find some material that's non-slip. And I cut it to size because I'm really, really eccentric. <laughs> And I'm just kind of weird about this kind of stuff. So, so I got this, and I just got this a week ago. So the next morning, I couldn't wait to see if it's going to work. So I, now I can put it on the couch, coffee on the couch, and I got my little footstool, and I'm not laying down. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, I'm not, I'm not laying down. I'm sitting up, and I can, I can clean back, and I, me and my buddy here, I mean, we, we, we're in it, and I got the pillow. I put the pillows perfect. I got the light perfect like I like it. When Tammy comes in, she turns another light on. I'm praying she goes back to the room because I don't like that light. I mean, I, I got this dialed in to what I like, and it makes it work for me. Yeah. So that brings me to a question for you, and that's number two. Do you have a place? First of all, do you have a time? And if you don't have a time... I'm encouraging, in fact, I'm urging you to set a time and set the alarm. Now, it's gotten to be so, I'm so dependable on this wake up thing, I don't usually set the alarm anymore. I literally, this morning, woke up at 3.15 and got up at 3.20. And I, I, I'm not trying to impress you. Could I just take you on my journey? Okay, don't, don't go there. I'm just trying to tell you what I'm doing. And so I prayed from 3.20 to about 6.20. Uh, no, maybe at 6. And then I got really hungry. And then we had a little breakfast. So, so, so in the mornings now for Tammy and I, we're praying minimum two, three, three and a half hours, seven days a week. And I, I, something's going on. And I don't feel like it was meant to be just my journey. Often when pastors go through their journey, it becomes a message to the congregation. So my journey is, if you want miracles, if you want to have God moments, you need to have God mornings. Before the day starts, we go into the place of prayer before we go out into the world that will eat us alive. We go into 
the place of prayer if you're going out into the world. If you want to have a God moment where he speaks and gives you an answer, gives you a solution, gives you a strategy, gives you a name, gives you a city, gives you all these things. If you want to have a God moment, we need some God mornings. God's mornings lead to God moment. Let me explain what I mean. Tammy and I, we, we, we learned this basic idea, find a, find, set a time, find a place, find the props, all these things. We've been doing this for 40 years, but it just got stagnant, so I had to come back to it again. Are you following me? So when we started doing this, did we ever get some answers? We're a new married couple, and she works for the mayor of the city, and I just run a huge political campaign. We both had homes, and we rented mine. We got all these things moving, moving, shaking, things happening in our life. So uh, I, I, if the campaign ended for me, then I'm out of a job for a few months in those days. So a businessman that was connected to the, uh, this campaign I just worked on, he hired me, graciously gave me money. I didn't even do much for him. I went to this office and sat there mostly by myself, nobody there. So it was a God idea. So he paid me, I'd stop and get coffee on the way. And I'd go to this little office, and the first thing I would do that my morning would gut, I'd pray. First thing. So I'm praying, and I'm asking specifically, God, would you give me direction? I got a wife now. She wants to have a baby soon. I don't know what to do. I just finished a campaign. I don't have anything big. You told me you're going to use me in the political arena for a decade, and this is only the first year. What, 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 what's next? I need to hear your voice. What are you going to tell me? What's going to happen? And I prayed it for a day, and then a week, and then a month, and then two months. Same thing, same pretty other thing, but I, that was a big focus. Many other things, daily prayer, but that was a big focus. No answers. Some days it felt like he wasn't even there. But you can't misread prayer. So I just kept praying the same thing. I think it was like two and a half months later. I'm, I knelt that day. I'll never forget it. Changed my life. I'm kneeling down in this little office by myself, and I'm crying out to God. And that day was a little different than the other days. You know what I'm talking about? You just tell. There's an atmosphere. You just feel connection. Now he's always there. Don't, don't, don't think it. he's always there. But there's other times, there's just, in the mystery of the spiritual world, sometimes there's a proximity, a closeness. Because of that day, I could tell. So I'm praying, and I'm asking again, what are you going to have me do? And about 20 minutes into the prayer, just as if someone whispered in my ear, I saw in my mind the name Denny Smith. Just out of, in the middle of nowhere. I, I don't, I'm not thinking anybody but my prayer. Just Denny Smith. Boom. Wait, wait, wait. Denny Smith. Long story short. Denny Smith was a United States congressman from Oregon, very powerful man. Three weeks later, I'm sitting in Congressman Denny Smith's living room with him and his chief of staff, and they hired me. I worked for him for eight years and raised a ton of money, went to Washington, D.C. many times, met the power brokers of the northwestern part of the United States. All that God moment came out of a... a a God morning. A God morning. We're sitting here, and there's a place in San Diego called Carmel Church. And it's 100% the result of mornings with God. We were in Seattle working in a church we helped plant. I was a businessman. Life is good. I'm getting restless. We're praying every day, remember? Every day we pray. Every day we pray. And we're praying half an hour to an hour. And I'm feeling restless, something's going on. Just couldn't figure out what it was. Again, it was one of those week after week after week, three or four months into this, I had a God moment. Felt God speak to me. I've called you to be a pastor and start a church. No, 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 no. You, you changed your mind on that, remember? I'm a businessman. I'm here to help. The, don't you remember? And God, no, I called you to start a church. I've never wanted to start a church. What, what, what do you mean? And I'm having this out loud conversation, this God moment. It's like he's sitting there. A few months later, I tell my pastor, two years later, I come here to start a church. You're sitting here, hearing this message, which hopefully is changing your heart, and making you want to go pray, and it was birthed out of a God moment that came from multiple God mornings. Lawsuits resolve, huge financial increases, a financial miracle that's unbelievable, can't, doesn't make any sense. It was birthed out of a 
a morning with God? What is it you've left on the table? What is it that's not answered? What miracle is it that's just ahead for you? I was having a God morning, fasting as a single man, praying and fasting, doing every morning, asking God for direction for my life. In multiple mornings, nothing, 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 bam! That was the most significant prayer moment I've ever had in my personal walk with God. I literally, it was so holy, I opened my eyes to look and see if God was in the room. I mean, it was the, unbelievable. And I felt prompted to write. And I just found the paper two days ago. I'd forgotten about it. I found the paper where I wrote the notes down where God showed me. When you get back to, I was on a mission trip. When you get back to Portland, you will find the person you're going to marry. You will buy a house when interest rates are 21%. And you'll get involved in politics full time and be there for 10 years. I mean, it just is as if he's telling me what to write. I weeks later went back to Portland, landed there. All three of those things happened within one week. Just life altering moments with God come from every day mornings with God. There is no other way. What are we leaving on the table, church? What are we leaving that we don't know about because we're just not there? We're not spending the time with the only person that can solve all things, and that's God. Okay, let's get back to here. Let's find a time to pray. So what time will you pray? And this whole morning thing, by the way, morning prayer. Morning prayer with God starts the night before. Did I already say that? No, I didn't, did I? Well, I'm taking it now. There you go. So, so mor- mor- morning prayer, morning prayer starts the night before, meaning that if I stay up late every night, and, and, and yeah, just be real, you stay up till midnight every night, and you're supposed to get up at 5 o'clock or something, well, your body and soul don't want to cooperate with that. Because they aren't rested. Spirit wants to be your body and soul. So you're not, you're not getting me. And so, so, so what you'll learn is that, do you, do you really want to be a Christian who's on fire, that gets answers? You get answers for yourself. You get answers for people. You walk into a room and suddenly you have an answer to solve the problem at work. You want to go into a room and someone comes to you and opens their heart and they become a Christian just like, you want to walk in that kind of a lifestyle? I'm telling you, it comes by spending time with God. It comes from spending mornings with him before you do everything else. I pray a hunger comes on everybody in this room, an insatiable hunger for God that you're going to say, Pastor, I'm setting a time. If the the big moment starts at 7, I'm going to back it up. And I'm here to tell you, some of you are going to back it up an hour or maybe two hours. Or then maybe it's not every day. It's going to be a few days a week. We're going to become a house of prayer. We're going to see intercessors. We're going to see God do powerful things because God does nothing on this planet apart from Christians praying. Did you know that? God doesn't move apart from Christians praying. So find a time. Secondly, find a place. Jesus said it this way. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you shut the door, pray to your father who's in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Secret place. Go in your room, shut the door. The feeling is find a sacred place where you can shut out the noise and the distractions. Find a place where it's just, it's just, it's just maybe away from the noise in the house. I suggest you leave your computer someplace else and maybe consider leaving your phone in some way for else. I use my phone every day, but, and, and at first it was bugging me because I, you know, checked the email. Oh yeah, I wonder what that, wonder what's happening there. And it's too easy. And it's a big old distraction. And just being really practical here, I'm I'm wanting to tune into my spirit, not my soul. And if this thing's going to hurt me, I'm going to leave it. So I'm I'm working with it because I want to use it to write things down and look up scriptures. If you can do that, great. You just don't want to be distracted. Don't want to be distracted. I like this scripture regarding Jesus in Mark 1. Jesus got up long before daylight. He left the house while it was dark and made his way to a secluded place to give himself to prayer. And you'll see why. Look at the next verse. Later, Simon Peter and his friends searched for Jesus. When they finally tracked him down, they said, hey, everybody's looking for you. Well, it says here, 
um, he gave himself to prayer. He wanted to give himself first to prayer before he gave himself to people. He wanted to help those people, and he knew they were going to come find him. But first, he needed to talk to the Father. You and I first, 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 first. Everybody say first, 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 first. First part of the day, first part of the day, first part of the day, first part of the day. I want to give myself to prayer. I want to connect with him so when I go here to connect, oh, I'm flying high. I got answers, I got solutions, I got peace in the midst of the storm because I've connected my spirit into the journey. And the third thing I said, everybody say time. time. Decide a time. Number two, everybody say place. place. Find a place. And number three, discover a prop up. I told you mine. Get the couch perfect, get the pillow perfect, get the light perfect, get my little buddy, my tray, non-skid tray. And, 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 and get everything propped up because uh, I don't know if you're believing me. This literally changed it does. me. It does. These simple things. I, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a total life changer, game changer for me. I cannot wait to get up and do this. And I speak that over you in Jesus' name. So what is your prop up? Pastor Nick goes for a walk most mornings for 20 minutes and then comes back. He prays on the walk, but the exercise gets him going. And then he goes and lays in his hammock in his office, which is a typical Nick kind of a thing. And he does that, and he prays in the hammock. Uh, um, his wife, Jenny, she gets in the van, drives to the coffee shop she likes, prays on the way, drinks the coffee and prays while she's coming back, leaves the car in the garage and finishes her prayer life before she goes in with all the noise of the family. Pastor Gabe nails it. Every morning he gets in the hot tub and prays. <laughs> but, but... But, you know, these are fun thoughts, but is there a prop up that would help you? Is, is there something that you could do differently, a different room, um, different lighting? And maybe you're like me. Uh, uh, we talk a lot about the car. It really is a stimulant. It works for me. I love it. I can't wait to drink it. It makes me happy. It cheers me up. It gives me a lift physically from the stimulant. I get excited about it. I'm thanking God for coffee beans most mornings. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's amazing. What, 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 you, you laugh at me, have fun. Huh? What, what, what's your prop up? Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. What would assist you in prayer? And then lastly, um, so first is time, second place, third is prop up, fourth is a plan. Following a plan on what to pray is extremely important. We were taught 40 years ago to pray what's called the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be in him. Because Jesus said it this way, when you pray, say this. And so uh, we've, we, we've taught this for years. I've prayed that prayer. The, there's six points to it. I've prayed it, Tammy and I have, every day for over, over 40 years. There's millions of Christians that do all over the world. And, and so uh, I, I want to take you uh, through those six points for the next few weeks and revisit them again and get it branded on us. You can pray anything you want to pray, but if you don't have a plan, we tend to go off and it, it, the plan just keeps you in focus. You can camp on one point and spend most of the time, but the point is you've got a place. You've got a highway to ride on. And uh, I think there's a card on your chair. You can look at it. It's not the final. It's just showing you that we have these six points from the, from the teachings of Jesus and uh, we're going to go through that. Here's what I want to start next Thursday. We never offered this before. We're going to have an early morning prayer time or, or morning with God prayer time starting next Thursday morning, 6 a.m. It'll last for 20 minutes. And we'll meet with you on a Zoom call for anyone who wants to hit the QR code and uh, join me. I, 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 I'm hoping to see phones go up. If you'd like some assistance, you'd like to be a part of a group of people who are learning to pray in the mornings, we'll be there for 20 minutes. If you can't do the whole 20, do 15, just be there. Come online. If you, if you hit that QR code, we'll notify you and give you the, uh, the address on that Zoom call. And we're going to do that for the next few months and see how it works, maybe continue it forever, but we'll just start practicing this prayer time together, and it will maybe be a jump start 
and just kind of get you going so you can then take off on the other days and you become more of a committed, faithful, everyday morning with God prayer. I'm praying every morning and I'm looking for those God moments. Ooh, let me just, can I read you some scriptures? Yes. Since I haven't read many. Hey, God, I want to put up those scriptures in the Psalms about morning. Psalm 5, verse 3. Listen to my voice in the morning. Each morning, I bring my request to you, and I wait expectantly. I love this one, Psalm 119. I pray with all my heart. Answer me, Lord. I rise daily before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your words. Psalm 88, I cry out to you, Lord. My prayer meets you first thing, first thing, first thing in the morning. And then this is Jesus again, early morning himself. In the morning, long before sunrise, Jesus went to a place to pray. In the morning, in the morning. Yeah, pray anytime. But there's something about a God first habit. I get up and my first thought is me and God and coffee on the cup with the light with all my little pieces together. I, I, that, that, that's what I think of. Somebody shut up. And that's what I'm going to think of. That's what you're going to think of. I want to read you some good scriptures, and then we'll close here in a couple minutes. But we need to hear the word of God. James 1.22. It's kind of an exhortation slash warning. <laughs> he says, don't merely listen to your pastor preaching. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Don't, don't merely miss it, listen to the word pastor preaching and deceive yourself. Do what it says. So the action plan here is determine I am going to join this prayer journey mornings with God. I'm going to choose the time. I'm going to choose the place. I'm going to think about the props and I'm going to follow the pattern. I'm going to do these four things and my life's going to change. And what happened to my past, by the way, those stories I told you happened when I was in politics and business, not as a pastor. Yeah. Okay, don't go there. This is for Christians, Christians, everybody, connecting with God. I promise you, oh God, I promise you, you're going to have answers that you'll never hear, never experience if you don't listen to your pastor, or better yet, you don't listen to the Spirit of God calling Carmel Church family to a deeper, fresh, new place of powerful daily prayer with God, mornings with God, mornings with God, mornings with God. And this is God's heart, James 4, 8, come close to God, and what happens? I'm going to say again, come close to God and who's first? He wants to, but he gave us a will. He's not going to invade us. He's waiting for us to, the moment you even start, boom, he's there. He's waiting. He's ready to come close. I love this scripture. It really grabbed me this week. Call to me and I will answer you and I'm going to show you great mighty things. Things you don't know yet. I'm going to show you great. Anybody here wants some great and mighty things that comes out of prayer? You call on him and he's going to answer. He's going to answer. And the scripture has been really relevant during the political season, but I want to read it to us again. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Can we read it out loud together? If my people... And I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. If, humble yourself, inferring when we don't pray is <laughs> pride. We're saying we'll just do it on our own. We're not verbalizing it, but that's what we're saying. I, I got this, I got, well, I, I'm kind of busy, I, I can't, no, no, no. Man, there's so, you're, the quality of your life that I see in just a few days from now, it's going to start quick. It's going to start quick. It's not going to be much. It's going to start quick. You're going to see a difference quickly, quickly. You're going to feel his presence. You're going to feel more joy. You're going to feel more peace. You're going to find direction. You want to find who you're going to marry? Let's start praying about it. 
You want to find out how to increase your career? Let's start praying about it. You want a miraculous open door for you that's been closed for decades? Let's start praying about it. You want a healing in your body? You've been asking and asking, nothing's happened. Let's start praying about it. Let's get serious. Let's get on our knees and cry out to God. Have God mornings, mornings with God, mornings with God. Bring moments with God. Yeah. And the last scripture I want to give you. This is the one we started, started the year with back in January. David says this, hey God, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And I want to tell you, God, my heart's responding, I'm coming. I'm coming. This message is asking you individually, are you coming? Are you hearing God? He's speaking through your pastor today. He's saying, come and talk with me. Come and spend some time with me. Let's work through these things you're facing. Let me pour out my spirit on you. Let me work through you and see your family saved. Let me release you from that condemnation that been you've been struggling with for months and months now. Let me take off the blanket of shame and give you a new anointing and a new confidence in who you are. Let me take you on a journey of discovery and un 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 unpack part of your spiritual DNA you didn't know were there. And it comes from spending more Mornings with God. He's saying, come and talk with me. Come and spend time with me. And if you do, I'm going to talk with you. I'm going to help you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just pray. I pray that our church would just say a big amen. Uh, we're, just, we're hearing what you're saying, and we want to flow with it. We're going to respond with it. And we're going we're gonna to just keep working on these steps. We're going to keep working on it. We're going to decide a time before we leave here today. We're going to send out an email this week, family. We're going to send out an email this week, and it's going to say, have you found your time? Have you set it? Have you set your watch? Have you set your phone? Have you set the clock? Let's get, it's, it's the same time every day. Let's make it a routine. Have you set a time? Have you decided on the place, the room, the walk? What is it? Have you, have you made a decision? If you haven't, it, you might not do it. Do you have some prop-ups that might help you could enact? And are you ready to do, go on a discovery with your, with your pastors and your family and unpack this wonderful prayer pattern that Jesus personally gave us so we can walk into the presence of the Almighty every single day and receive instructions and receive answers and receive direction and receive healing and receive reconciliation, receive multitudes of touch points with heaven because we're not going to quit praying every single day.